Whoa! We showed these kids some products purchased at a nearby store and asked them what they thought. Ooh, this is cool. We all picked okay, up the okay. same thing. What they didn't know is that each one was a tobacco product. Oh, I think it's a grape. I see that right there. And look at mine. It smells like gum. Yummy. This one looks super cool. Ooh, this, this looks pretty. shiny. This smells like strawberry. <laughs> I'll say these are my favorite. Blueberries. Animal. Got two animals. Animal. Ugh, are these mints? Hey, look at this one. The tobacco industry spends nearly $1 million an hour marketing its addictive and deadly products. Pink is one of my favorite colors. With brightly colored packaging and fruit and candy flavors that kids love, who do you think they're targeting? Could I have one? How about we each get two? Wait, I found them now. We get to keep them. <laughs> Hello, I'm James Curry with the Communication Department here at MCHD, Mobile County Health Department, talking to Harold Jones. He is our coordinator for our SWAT program. How are you doing, Harold? Doing great. How are you doing this morning? Good. Thank you for coordinating this. Uh, we've got LaFleur High School, if y'all can give us a wave here. There we go. And we also have Alma Bryant High School. I'll check in with me too. Okay. Then I just want to point out we also have representatives from Mary G. Montgomery High School. Oh, okay. Okay. They were they were acting kind of stealthy on me here. So y'all go go ahead and give us a wave, MGM. Yeah, there they are. Okay. All right. Thanks for joining us also. <clears throat> Sorry, so anybody want to jump in and tell me why you're part of this program? I'll go ahead and speak. Uh, I joined SWAT because there are so many families that are affected by the tobacco use. So the more that we bring awareness to it, the more lives we are saving in general. Anybody else have anything else to share about why you're in this program? Um, I had several family members that started smoking when they were very young and they eventually passed away from the long-term effects from it. So I feel very passionately about it you know, to, to making sure people aren't smoking and different things like that. Overall, one of the main, uh, some of the main focus is to um, prevent the access for other youth, you know, getting this readily available drug, I have to say. Uh, nicotine in itself is a drug. Uh, we also um, trying to prevent access or uh, or the, prevent the exposure that um, our young people are dealing with from the secondhand smoke that many times don't necessarily come from their own behavior, but from someone around them. Also to try to curb the marketing tactics from the big tobacco companies that is trying to uh, persuade them into this behavior early in their life. Uh, we know that um, 90% of all smokers start by age 18. So um, we, we're trying to curve that marketing tactic as well as uh, what we wanna do is make sure we put the message of education out there. Since all of this really is a decision, we feel that when people are informed correctly, when it concerns them making that decision, we believe, especially being led by this group of youth, that they can make better decisions. How do you talk to other teenagers about smoking and vaping? So anybody want to answer that for me? I'll answer. <laughs> um, we mostly, we try to approach them in a very non-threatening way and not like we're trying to shame them if they do it, but just to educate them because our main goal is to, is to educate them on the dangers of it to ultimately save their lives in the future. And most of them are not aware of like all of the harmful substances in tobacco and um, the fact that nicotine is a drug. And um, we just try to kind of talk to them and sit down just in a very like, hey, I'm just trying to help you understand this and not in like a way where they feel uncomfortable. So when you all give presentations, 
what kind of uh, what kind of reactions are you getting? Are you are you getting people that are more engaged after you do a presentation or or what? Tell me tell me how that happens. Tell me what's going on. All right, um, Jim, your turn. Go ahead. Um, we give a lot of presentations to to the younger kids in elementary schools, and I feel like they they have like a lot of crazy reactions because they really don't understand what's really in the in the nicotine and all that stuff they do. So so I think that's a positive thing, like starting with the younger kids. So that way they'll know like not to do what we tell them not to do with the drugs and smoking and all that. Yes, sir. Um, last week we went to Forest Hill and talked to those kids there, and um, they were they were flabbergasted really by all the stuff that we uh, showed to them, like the the heart and uh the teeth and all that stuff. I'm sure after you tell them rat poison, you know, yeah, yeah and it, that probably freaks them out. Cyanide, you know, everything else. So. Yeah, yeah, that is that, there is a there is a great deal of shock value that's associated with all the chemicals for sure. Um, um, <clears throat> yeah, I was gonna add that like, sorry, okay, um, that they're like, sorry, they're doing construction work at Bryant. That's okay. <laughs> we, we we have nothing, no problem with progress. Um, but sometimes they're in denial about a lot of stuff. Like they don't want to accept the fact that like that could be happening to their families. So I feel like that's another like reaction we get a lot along with what he said about them being flabbergasted and stuff. Yeah, it, it, you know, it seems like to me that until that actually affects them and their family, it's just kind of a, you know, a situation that's out there that they have read about until you know, they attend a funeral or they go to see someone in the hospital. So yeah, you're right on that. Um, well, one of the things that I'll point out, like you said, that they're sometime with a few, it's hard for them to accept because they're looking at someone they actually love behave in a way that someone is telling them this is negative. We're not, and one thing we try to point out is the fact that nothing's wrong you know you can't look at the person and and you know because the addiction is from the nicotine so you it's not don't look at the person um as if they're somebody's wrong you know that something's wrong with them or they're wrong um you know um not to stop you know don't stop loving these people uh, but they're in a, a position that the information you're receiving can be of service and help to them because 70% of all the smokers who, you know, want to quit, 70% uh, of all smokers, they want to quit. And when she mentioned, uh, uh, when MGM mentioned about some of the props, like we have, like, um, we take in, like, Mr. Grossmouth and try to explain things about how leukoplathia, uh, based on those that are using dip, can uh, set up on the gum line and cause to remove that, they're, they're cutting your jaw out, okay? Young people are, you know, surprised about that. And when they realize that this behavior can remove part of your jaw, and all of a sudden it's like, you know what? I don't think I want to look like that. Uh, when we talk about things like COPD, which is caused by, you know, really the buildup of the tar uh, for every cigarette, which is 20 in a pack where that person is smoking, over half that cigarette ends up like this tar in, in their body. And we try to show them how thick this is and really have them, you know, do a breathing exercise to show them that that person you love, if they keep this behavior up and this continue to coat their lungs, they're not able to take that deep breath like you are. And so just the way that they present it and with the uh, different uh, things that they show, the phlegm, the tar jar and all, it brings it a little bit more real to the young people. Um, and again, immediately now the concern is, well, what can I do to help the people I love? Okay, so, um, so you know, when you talk to a family member, you can obviously you talk to your family member differently than you do talk to a student or, you know, someone else where you're given a presentation. So, um, so if you were talking to your family member um, and tell them, you know, cigarettes is a drug, you know, they're actually taking a drug. Um, 
let me look at my notes here, which we're talking about nicotine. Uh, you know, how does your family react? You know, when you when you mention that to them, I had a family member that smoked like since he was like a teen, and he knew the consequences of it, but he still did it. To which he ended up having lung cancer and passing away shortly afterwards. So I feel like in most cases, people who do smoke most of the time do understand the consequences in the end, but 10 out of 10 do not care. But I feel like if you like, yeah. Right here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, I've, um, I have a friend who smokes too, but when I told him about the, con the consequences of smoking, uh, he didn't know that and he stopped smoking for a little bit, but it was hard for him to stop smoking when I told him about the consequences. And I'm glad that he stopped when I told him. And that's good that you did that. It's good that you interceded. Um, you know, it's it's important also too when you when you talk to people and give these presentations, especially your family member, um, just reinforce how much they mean to you, and what what would that mean to you if they weren't there. Um, and maybe, maybe them seeing, you know, your heart and your passion for you know, this program, maybe that does help them change to maybe quit. So, you know, keep being passionate about it for sure. Um, One of the other things that I'll point out is uh, trying to drive home the, the message that it is the nicotine. It's the nicotine plus the other chemicals they put in with this uh, in your normal tobacco products like cigarettes or uh, um, uh, cigars, when they add ammonia alone, that boosts the impact of the nicotine, which is already addictive, but that boosts the impact by 100%. So it's designed to whoever tries this, draw them in, where even though they want to quit, like I say, 70% want to quit, but we look at a behavior because uh, almost out of control behavior because nicotine goes to their brain. And so now something else is really telling them, even though they want to quit or do something else, I, I want to go outside and smoke. And so um, I'm going to say it's not that they don't care, it's that they it's the addictiveness of the nicotine itself along with the, the other chemicals they put in. Tobacco products are designed uh, for the companies to make money. Uh, the reason that it's marketed, marketed to young people at such an early age is because of the uh, brain development and they figure if we can get them in early, we have customers for life. And, um, Again, those target markets we see are uh, 26 down. So we're talking elementary, middle, high school, and college age, where young people should be really learning how to take on the responsibilities and move into the development of, of, of um, you know, their careers and, and being more responsible citizens. But when we have somebody in society that's actually targeting them simply for the sake of gaining money, that makes it pretty, you know, uh, alarming. And that's, again, why we do what we do. It's a decision. But be fair to people and give them the opportunity to make a well-informed, positive decision. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. that. That brings me to my next question that I was going to ask about the marketing. Um, what do you all think about the marketing? You've seen the packages. You know, they're not, they're not discreet. You know, they're bright colored. They have catchy names. Uh, everything has a flavor. Uh, so what do you all think about the, the marketing aspect of it? Do you, you feel kind of insulted at the way that they are approaching you? Um, I definitely think that they are targeting towards teenagers with like the bright colored packaging and the flavors like you were saying. And it is kind of an insult, I guess, because like they're because they know because they know what they're doing and they know who they're trying to get addicted to it. And especially in like low income areas, they advertise it more because they're already, they're trying to take advantage of an already vulnerable community, which is just the greed they have just trying to make money and they don't care about who they hurt in the process. 
<clears throat> yeah, I, the last gas station that I went to, there was, I couldn't even see in the front windows, there were so many signs for, I mean, you all have gotten gas in places like that too. You'd see the signs through every one of the windows in the front. And like I said, they're not discreet. They're loud, they're bright, the, you know, the numbers and the names, and everything are real big on it. So, I mean, they don't want you to miss it. It's, it's you know, like I mentioned, it's, it's kind of insulting, like you can't think for yourself. So we're going to tell you what we want you to think, um, you know, as far as marketing goes. And that's one of the things about the product placement, the density, like she mentioned in the, um, in certain areas, uh, near schools, near areas where they know children are very, uh, they're out there, or just low-income areas. But one of the things uh, to show you how, like you say, they really don't care, uh, you had several of the big tobacco companies back in the days uh, was asked uh, specifically about nicotine. Is it addictive? Is this chemical you're putting in your product, is it affecting people? And all of them stated, no, it's not addictive. And so that showed you at, uh, right there that they're willing to tell uh, untruths so that they can get to their next customer because their bottom line is how much money they can make. Uh, tobacco uh, is one of the, it is the number one cause of preventable uh, death and uh, disease, uh, disabilities and diseases in the United States today. So I think it's something we really need to look at in a major way when we talk about like COVID and things of that nature, especially with vaping among young people, it's a real epidemic. And again, it goes back to true education uh, and building the, the esteem of the people so that they can feel confident in making a good positive uh, decision, thinking more about their future goals than just what's going on in this moment. Carol, go ahead. Well, not just uh, uh, posters in the windows, but the targeting online now, which is where a lot uh, of it takes place. But also, and when I say online, in a way that maybe when the parent is looking, they may not even know. Uh, one of the videos that we show, uh, the young lady, everything she has on pretty much is a vape. So when your child walks in the home with a new, um, hoodie you don't think much of that you just like that's a piece of clothing but when that hoodie is designed to be a vape the strings are actually when you pull out a vape or the ink pen might be a vape or they watch might be a vape uh these are just some of the things their backpack is a vape these are all products that you have to ask yourself if i'm an adult I can just go get what I want. So who's actually marketing a product where a child can have a pen just like this, but is actually a vape and no one would know. So you see this child writing, uh, but later on this child is somewhere, maybe just casually walking down the hall with it in their mouth or in the bathroom or wherever, and you don't even know. Um, these are the products that are being produced and, uh, and put back out there uh, to our young people. So um, we're trying to do what we can, but it's more to be done. Who, would, who wouldn't want some extra money, right? Everybody here, raise your hand if you would want extra $2,000 a year. Yeah, I think I would too. All right, well, let's break down the $2,000 and figure out where that goes. So cigarettes roughly cost four to seven dollars a pack times seven days a week times 52 weeks a year. You end up with about two thousand dollars of cost or more, you know, depending on what you're buying and where you're buying it. So I'm sure you all could think of better ways to spend two thousand dollars or more a year, couldn't you? Well, like as we were talking about earlier, like they target mostly teenagers. And a lot of teenagers are going to college and stuff. So that would be one big way to like save money for tuition. And not just that, like the money, like we talk about it in every pre like SWAT presentation that like out of a lifetime, you could be saving $85,000.
in total if you spend a pack a day, which which an average is like five to seven dollars, like you said. Mm -hmm. So that's like enough to buy a car or even like an apartment or pay off like all your student loans if you plan on going to college. So that's a lot of money you could be saving in certain ways. Yeah, you all are are very bright and I'm very thankful that you all are in this program because you're looking at it from a different angle. And I, I appreciate you taking that different approach. Um, anybody else have anything else they want to add? Remain focused and keep their own mind. I know the influence is very high to try to do drugs, but stay on track. You know what's right and what's wrong. Don't be influenced. That's good. But you know, you know, kids are going to listen to you all. They're not going to listen to me and they're not going to listen to Harold. They're certainly going to listen to you more than they're going to listen to us. So we appreciate you all being in this program. And uh, I just can't thank you all enough for being just wonderful ambassadors in the community and also from your schools. Um, you know, it takes a special kind of person to be able to, to stand up and stand in the gap for somebody else and speak about something that you feel very strongly about. And I just, I just want to personally thank you also here too. I mean, you know, smoking has affected, you know, my family and, and you know, people in, in uh, my life as well. So I appreciate you all being here on this forum today and um, getting the message out about Kick Butts Day. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you all. So if y'all want to give the customary wave as everybody does on Zoom, thank you all. All right, thanks for being here. Take a close look. This student is outfitted with vaping devices, but you can't see them. Why? They're designed to look just like normal school gear for sale online and in vape shops, giving kids new ways to hide their vaping habits anywhere they go, including school. It's rampant. I think every administrator who has a middle school and high school are grappling with vaping issues. Superintendent Melissa Varley oversees the Berkeley Heights School District in New Jersey. It's virtually undetectable. We don't know if a student is vaping in a classroom. So would you know what to look for? We're taking over a classroom at this high school. It's filled with student volunteers. Thank you guys. We're going to plant these hidden vaping devices and bring in teachers and parents and see just how well they do at spotting the vape. I get to work. Here's one that's designed to look just like a black marker. Stashing stuff all over the classroom. So this guy looks like a USB. It's not, it's a vape. And on students too. Sophia looks like she's just wearing a regular hoodie, but underneath a vaping device. Some vapes even look just like school supplies. Looks just like a pen, but the vaping device is inside and you can write with it. Time to bring in our volunteers. I'm Vicki Wynn with the Today Show. It's nice to meet you. What's your name? Miss Moretti. Okay, Miss Moretti. Yes. We want to know if you can spot the vape. So, we have outfitted this classroom with vaping devices. Look high, look low. You ready? I think I'm ready. You get one minute. Okay. All right, here we go. She spots a couple of them. That device that Dom's got there. But breezes right past most. I think that could be. Before time Three, runs out. Two, ooh. and that is time. How many of you had a vaping device that she spotted? Three items, not bad. How many of you actually have vaping devices? But she missed 11 of the 14 items we hid. It's scary, because it could be just in plain sight. Some teachers spot a couple of the more obvious ones. That looks like one, too. But most miss the harder to find items, like this watch. Sam is wearing what looks like a smartwatch, uh. but if you press this button, mm -hmm. this part comes out. You can fill this with nicotine and it's an e-cigarette. It blends in so nobody would ever know. All five teachers missing this vape backpack. This one's got a hidden device right here in the strap. And I'm a hiker. I mean, this is the first thing I would think of as be a camelback so that we can get water through it. And the hoodie. I think it's ingenious marketing and I'm a little frightened. This could be happening right under your nose. Absolutely. It could be happening in my house. I have a 15 year old. Wow. So now, no hoodies. Even this school aide, a retired police officer, missing the watch and pen. Very disheartening that there's so many out there that the kids can get access to. What about parents? Will they do a better job spotting the vape? I think that's a vaping device. Not this group. He was writing with a pen, but inside the pen... <gasps> Got me. All right, I'm going to go home and check pens. 
Parent after parent also mistaking the decoys for vapes. I was pointing at this one, but that looks one looks fairly uh, suspicious as well. That's just a marker, and they confuse the real vapes for regular items. What did you think this was? Didn't even think to look at that. Probably a marker, or an eraser, or a highlighter. The most any of our volunteers spotted just five of the 14 items we hid. That's 36 percent a failing grade. It's very, very scary. An eye-opening experience for both teachers and parents. If you have to hide something, then there's something wrong with it. It's scary to see how easily they can hide things like that. Parents need to be more invasive in their kids' spaces and really actively engaged. Thank you to the California Department of Public Health and the Today Show for their video segments to help us highlight Kick Butt today. Also, special thanks to Mary G. Montgomery High School, LaFleur High School, at Alma Bryan High School.